Okay, we're going to do a second uh, audio, primarily audio post. Um, again, the disclaimer, this is not part of the data instruction type of videos that I usually do. Um, if you're not interested in just some nitty gritty about personal experiences and some rambling, uh, please skip to other videos that I put up on YouTube. Uh, but I did want to uh, do an a audio version of this just because I realized my style of writing these blog posts is a bit uh, verbal and for some it might be a little more interesting to hear them than to um, to read them. So, you know, my website, ryanwomack.com, has uh, my hosted blog. Um, I was looking again at some of these past posts and kind of realizing the style might again benefit from this reading out loud uh, so this is number two of the little mini series that I'm doing um, the post here is called spinning up new set static site servers or diversification as risk management so uh, this is you know really just very specific about my experiences trying to re envision my web uh, hosting presence um, and so I don't claim to any you know general universal knowledge on this um, but I will uh, read it out and um, pop open some of these links for a little bit of visual interest although it's certainly fine to just not look at the screen and just use this kind of as an audio uh, audio post Okay, I, I will just clean up my tabs that I had opened in the previous video. Um, so, this was summer 2023 when I redid a lot of my web approach. Um, there was an earlier blog post about what drove me to do that. And here I am trying to broaden my knowledge and secure my web assets by learning a bit more about other services and migrating sites. Um, after realizing that it is perhaps not wise to remain reliant on AWS, Amazon Web Services. So this is a quick commentary on the services that I learned about and tried um, from various internet posts. I just highlighted one here that was um, maybe a useful summary of some of the types of things that are out there. My needs are simple, right? All my sites are static mail hosting, any other services are taken care of elsewhere. I was looking for services that would make the provision of sites with SSL easy, have a reasonable free tier, be relatively transparent in their setup, uh, and also have reasonable paid plans for a modest level of use in the odd event that I would somehow go viral and generate a lot of requests and bandwidth usage, right? So if, if very, very unlikely to happen, but you know, some services have this model where it's, okay, it's free up to here, and then all of a sudden you're in a $100 a month uh, commercial plan if you if you need it to go beyond that. Um, so that was a factor just to not get caught or have to migrate again if something like that happened. Okay, so we'll just go through service by service. Render. Uh, render. And I, I really don't want to go into detail of like looking at the sites. That's not what this is about. I'll just read the post. Render provided a free and easy to understand pathway to pushing my Hugo website content to their servers, along with HTTPS and domain redirects that, that just worked. Nothing needed to be configured. With just 30 to 40 minutes of late night work, I was able to serve up my most important web project via Render and make that project independent of the foibles of AWS. It was Render that resolved my midnight panic over the potential demise of my sites, described in the previous post. Uh, DigitalOcean has always been appealing to me because of their droplets being simple and easy to operate in a predictable way, predictable in pricing as well. Their apps feature is only a few years old and can host static sites. Right, so you may think of DigitalOcean as these droplets that you can run other things on, like a shiny server, for example, which will be the subject of a future 
uh, video. Um, but they can host static, static sites uh, for free. And I was hopeful, and it was quite quick to get almost all the way there. I was able to get the www prefix subdomains working easily, but the base domains without www had problems authenticating. So I have a ticket in to try to resolve this. Um, maybe it is something easy. I hope it is not a limitation of their free tier. Otherwise, I quite like the service and the way dashboards are presented. So later, I, like I can report the result of that is that it sort of partially resolved, right? It's still not nearly as smooth as render. There is a limitation there. I won't go into any technical details. Maybe someone else out there knows a better way to resolve this. Um, but it was enough for me to serve my site. It was uh, also enough for me to say uh, render is better for my sites that get a bit more visibility. Um, so then there's uh, Netlify, or I'm not ex never exactly sure how to pronounce that, but it, you know it's well known. Uh, it has power and reliability that I've seen used for other projects that I work with, um, and you know certainly uh, very good. They have a nice um, setup process. It's impressively done and explained. Um, but I had a specific issue there. Um, something hangs up in authenticating my cu custom domains via external DNS. And their model is really to emphasize getting you to switch to Netlify DNS uh, rather than providing detail about how to resolve the issues. Again, maybe somebody out there knows <laughs> a little bit more about this, but in terms of someone trying to get this done without investing too much time, um, I, I was a little bit let down just by that one phase, the, this difficulty of using external DNS with their service. Um, Versal was completely unknown to me before this crisis, um, although I now gather they're a hot item in certain sectors. Uh, at least I thought so a year ago. I, you know, I don't claim again to keep up with, with any of that. Um, and they, their site had a slick interactive setup that was super quick. Uh, the only nit I can pick is that it is a bit too smooth and corporate, which makes me feel slightly uncomfortable. Uh, it clashes a little bit with my, I don't know, do-it-yourself ethos or something. <laughs> but Versal got my site up and running even faster than Render. Um, so, you know, it has worked well. Um, so my issues seem to re revolve around needing a solid A record IP address to point to so that the hosting service can deal with redirect and secure authentication in a complete way. Render and Versal put that up front in their process and instructions. I'm waiting on DigitalOcean and I hope that I can figure out the Netlify de details as well. That was last summer and you know what happened in the meantime is that I got my setup working well enough um, and those sites that had the little obstacles, you know, I just kind of let them fall uh, to the side, essentially, right? At, or take care of less important tasks. So that's, again, how real life kind of works out. Um, maybe there is another way to fix this, but I'm hoping not to spend too much time learning the ins and outs of DNS. Flattened C names are already enough for me, which, you know, I picked up <laughs> last summer. Um, I looked at a few services that also seemed solid but didn't provide much in the free tier. I'm going to give an honorable mention to Surge.sh, uh, which was intriguing. I uh, kind of like their um, the whole style of the way they seem to do things, um, but their documentation is somewhat opaque and the presentation is a bit too sleek and minimalist, right? So it's hard to know what is going on under the hood. Just sort of you run the script and like let them take care of it. Where are my files being hosted? <laughs> I want to know what country they're in, like what laws apply. What is happening with their uploads? Uh, we are be being asked to trust everything to their scripts, which sounds like a recipe for giving up control uh, and becoming vulnerable to their future decisions. So it's very path dependent. 
Uh, and who hosts out of St. Helena anyway? <laughs> right, that's what the .sh uh, uh, stands for. Uh, so I, I did not go down that road. So one issue is that all of these simple services revolve around pulling code from GitHub, which introduces another single point of failure and is a reason for me also not to use GitHub pages. So, you know, GitHub, enormously popular, something that is so large that it's hard to imagine it going away. Um, however, that's where all the code kind of originates. Um, in my case, you know, the fact that I'm generating the static files myself, I have those. They sit in GitHub as an intermediate step. And if I were, if GitHub deactivated my account or GitHub went belly up, <laughs> as unlikely as that would be, um, I would be in the same boat as I was with AWS. Uh, but with control of my own static files, I could always take back control by spinning up my own server instance in the worst case, right? So, and my familiarity with multiple services would also help me adapt to future outages and changes. So perhaps going back to traditional web hosting might be the best case scenario, even though that, you know, the great thing about all these things that I'm talking about here is that for just like a little small static sites, they are free, right? Whereas if you are going to be hosting your own server instance, there's at least some cost involved in that. Again, a year ago, I said that I appreciated Gandhi's simplicity and long-term stability, providing the backbone domain names and DNS supporting all of these hosting adventures. How things changed, uh, as we'll see in the third part of this series. Um, so at that time, a year ago, I was relieved because I had gotten over my, you know, all my websites going down. Uh, I am feeling a bit better after last week's crisis, have, having developed some updated skills and coping mechanisms for navigating today's hosting environment. And so what it turned out, I kind of needed those coping mechanisms uh, because more surprises were coming. And if that you're still curious about that, uh, you can listen to the third part. If you have listened this far, uh, thank you for your attention, um, and uh, there'll be a little bit more of this style of video.